Good morning or good afternoon to all my little cougar artists out there. Let me start by saying we're going to have to shift gears. We're going to have to switch things up a little bit, do things differently in art class. But as Mr. Baudet would say, you got to be flexible. So the way that we're going to do art class for a while, at least, is I'm going to be teaching all of my art lessons through video presentations like this one. And you're going to follow along and do your artwork as you watch the video. Now, the good news is that while you're doing the artwork, I'm also going to be in the room with you physically, at least standing in the doorway to make sure that everything goes well. So you're going to have two Mr. G's with you each day that you have art. I'm so happy for you guys. When I think of all the children throughout the world who have no Mr. G's in their life and you have two, how lucky are you? So with that being said, if you're ready, I'm ready. Mr. G, are you ready? Well, then let's get started. So you've created a landscape drawing. I bet you think that makes you pretty amazing, huh? Well, you're right, you are pretty amazing. I've looked at your landscape drawings and they are amazing. If they weren't, we wouldn't be proceeding. You have everything that a landscape needs. You've got a sky in the background, you've got your mountains in your middle ground, and in your foreground, you've got your trees. Background, middle ground, foreground. Everything that a good landscape drawing needs, except color. You got to have color. What is a landscape drawing without color? What's a world without color? I love the smell of crayons in the morning. It smells like creativity. And the crayons we're going to use are pastel crayons. I call them juicy crayons, but they're actually oil pastels. Now, the only thing that you have to decide is whether you want to have a blue sky or an orange sky for a sunset picture. But no matter how you color, keep a couple things in mind. One is when you hold the crayon, hold it close to the tip. If you color firmly and you hold it in the middle when you color, well, it's going to break. So hold it close to the tip, hold it pretty much straight up and down instead of coloring like this, and color with short, even coloring strokes. When you color with long lines to fill up space quickly, no matter how many times you go over it, it always looks sloppy. So take your time. You got no place to go. This is our class. Take your time, color neatly. And if you're ready, make your decision. Do you want a blue sky or an orange sky? Once you've decided, we'll begin. Well, you've decided that you want to draw your Adirondack mountain scene at sunset. I hope so. Otherwise, you're watching the wrong video. But if you want to draw a sunset, get out your orange crayon and we'll start coloring. Now, the first thing that I'm going to draw is just behind my mountain, I'm going to draw just a little part of the sun a circle that's partially covered up. Now, if I decide later that I don't like the way my sun looks, I can always color right over it. But I'm going to put a little circle right here. And then after that, I'm going to color my entire sky orange. I'll start at the edges. That way I'll know exactly where to stop coloring. And if you have your orange pastel ready, go ahead and begin. Maybe we'll finish coloring at the same time. Now, hopefully you notice that I'm coloring with short, even lines. And with these pastel crayons, I don't need to press that hard. And I certainly don't want to scribble. It's not a race. And when you scribble, no matter how many times you will go over it, it always looks like scribbling. So like I said, go ahead, take your orange crayon and color your sky. Already, I'm nearly finished. And if you need a little bit more time to finish your sky, you can always pause the video before we go on to the next color.
There's my orange sky. I'm going to make my sun yellow unless, like I said, I don't like my sun. I could have just covered it up completely. I like the way that yellow looks. I'm actually going to take my yellow and go over the entire sky with yellow. And you're going to see that the yellow fills in those white spaces nicely. And it actually makes a little bit more color in your sky. It looks better, I think, than just a solid orange when you have a little bit of another color in there. This is the way the impression is painted. When they painted a blue sky, they didn't just take out their blue and cover it with one color. They would take blue and pink and gray and lavender and white and light blue and dark blue and take a lot of different colors to fill up every part of the picture. It would make each part a little bit more colorful, a little bit more interesting to look at. And I think if you put some yellow in your orange sky, it will be a subtle little improvement to your picture. And since I like the way my yellow combines with my orange, I'm going to add just a little bit of red. Now red is a much stronger, more dominant color than orange, so I only need a little bit. I'm going to start right at the top, right at the very top of my picture, and I'm going to put a red line going straight across. I'm pressing kind of firm, and as I move down in my picture, it's getting softer and softer and softer until it disappears. Keep it light. You can always decide to make it darker, but once you've gone too dark with the red, it's tough to make it lighter. I decide I want to make it a little darker just at the very top. I can make it darker, but if I go too dark, like I said, you can't reverse that. But now I have a little bit of red in my sky. And it's time to move on to my mountains. I'm going to take brown and I'm going to color around my trees. But again, I'm going to take my time. And if I'm moving a little bit too fast, feel free to stop the video or rewatch it. But it's really pretty straightforward. I'm coloring around my trees. I'm holding my pastel near the tip so it doesn't break. I'm coloring pretty firm. And I don't think it's that important that you color all in the same direction. I know there's a lot of people who say if you want something to look neat, you should always color in the same direction. I don't necessarily feel that that's true. But I do think it's important to color with little short coloring strokes that are no longer than an inch or so. When you color like this, and you've got some are short and some are long, then it looks sloppy. So take your time. Go ahead and color with me. Hopefully, if we're in total sync, we'll finish coloring our mountains at the same time. And if it's not exactly at the same time, that's okay. If you finish ahead of me, well, give me a break. I'm old. So wait for me. I am almost done.
and my mountains are now, are now colored brown. I think I'm going to do the same thing to my mountains that I did with my sky. I'm going to add a little bit of another color, and I think I'll start with maybe orange. Put a little bit of orange in my mountains. If you don't like the way this looks, then don't do it. Maybe closer to the sun, instead of orange, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow. And if the yellow mixes in with the brown and the orange, that's fine. But by adding a little bit of orange, Makes every part of the mountain a little bit more interesting to look at. Now, one thing I'm going to do is make my mountains a little bit darker. I want to have a little bit more contrast, a little bit more difference between the orange mountains or the orange sky and my mountain. So I'm going to add a little bit of a dark brown. You can do this if you want to, and if you don't want to, you don't have to. Yeah. I like this. I've got a little bit of dark brown, and especially towards the top, where my mountains and my sky meet, I'm going to lightly go over my mountains with darker brown. And you can see how it's already creating a little bit more contrast between the mountains and the sky. Now I can do my whole mountain color with dark brown, or I can have it gradually, slowly, softly fade away so that I have dark brown towards the top and lighter brown towards the bottom. You don't have to add the dark brown if you don't want to, but it's just something for you to think about as an option. Well, I'm ready for my final step and that's gonna be my trees in the foreground. And as long as I stay in this triangle shape, I can scribble pretty much any shape that I want. I'm going to start with the pole, the main trunk of the tree, and I'm going to color up. But because I don't want my tree to be perfectly perfectly rendered with branches that are all in exactly the same direction. It's okay if I go across, if I go up, if I go down, but I'm going to color nice and firm because I want to have my trees nice and dark. But if I stay in that shape and I color with short lines, and I color firm, I think I'm going to be satisfied with the way that they look. And I'm almost done with the green. Okay, I'm just coloring with little scribbles. They go in a bunch of different directions. Like that. If I want to, I can even add a little bit of black if I want to have a little bit more contrast. I can add some black to my trees. 
Black is, again, a more dominant color, so you don't need too much black. And this is optional. If you decide that you don't want to put any black in your trees, you don't have to. But that's what it looks like with a little bit of black in the trees. And then finally, to get rid of these white spaces, I'm going to go over, I'm going to fill in those white spaces with whatever color is behind my tree. So I'm going to take my brown and I'm going to fill in those white spaces so it looks like you can actually see a little bit of the mountains behind the tree. And if it gets a little bit messy, that's fine. As long as I'm coloring with little lines, if I get a little bit of green in my brown, a little bit of brown in my green, that's a good mess. And now I've got my landscape and it's completely drawn. Yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine, but I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Well, as we're finishing up our Adirondack scene, I know that some people pick the orange scheme, some people pick the blue scheme, but no matter which coloring scheme that you picked, I hope that you enjoyed watching the video. I hope you enjoyed working on your drawing. I hope you realize that your drawing does not have to look like your neighbor's, and more importantly, it doesn't have to look like mine. As long as you, as you learned a little something and you had fun, you tried your best, then it was worth it. I am looking forward to our next drawing assignment together. I hope you are too, and until then, stay creative, stay safe, Stay cougar strong. We'll see you soon.